That gut feeling isn't this kind of magical fairy thing, but it's really your subconscious picking up on things that your conscious mind hasn't yet had time to process. So if everything is geared to money, you sit back and you're like, hmm. And it's also really important because I think it makes you a more dynamic and interesting person, both to yourself and to those around you, right? So let's talk about growing into the woman you wanna be in your 20s, stepping into womanhood. Because I found in the six years I've been in my 20s so far, there's some things you learn through trial and error and experiences and other things you can draw on the experiences of women who are older and wiser or just may have achieved and are doing things in certain parts of life that you're not yet there. And so that's what I wanna talk about today. Some of the ways that you can step into your womanhood from finances to fitness and appearance to hobbies, right? These things that I feel like can just enrich your life as an individual, but also impact the way that you move through the world. So let's just get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is appearance. Now it may seem kind of shallow, like, well, that's what we're gonna start with, but there's no denying how important it is how you present in the world and how you feel about yourself. One of the most important things I did, one of the most powerful things was to start a fitness routine, start a fitness journey as early as possible. It changed the way I felt about my body, my confidence, my health, all these things were impacted by me starting a fitness routine and finding things that worked for me. For me, it was lifting, like it changed my life, honestly. And one of the things I started talking about when I first started YouTube, but it doesn't have to be that for you, right? It could be Pilates, it could be swimming, it could be absolutely anything, but finding the things that work for you and for your body and help you to keep the shape that you want, whatever that is for you, whatever that means for you and the woman that you want to become, find your fitness routine as early as possible because it will pay dividends like in the years to come. The reality is we're trying to look good, not just now, <laughs> like not just at 21, 22, 25, but also, you know, past that 30, 40, I'm trying to look good forever. Appearance isn't just a factor of fitness, right? If you're thinking about skin and hair and nails and also body, then what we put in our bodies is so important. And one thing I found in my 20s is to be cautious about the nutritional advice that I take on and not just to take advice about diet and those sorts of things from anyone or any place or anywhere. And instead focus on what works for me through research and through trying things myself because there are so many kind of information sources, so many people saying they have the answer to everything, everything from veganism to carnivore, that it's easy to kind of get swept up sometimes in the hype or sometimes even the dogma associated with these and start to veer away from things that are working for your body and you stop listening to your body. That being said, I think there are some things in your 20s that we can kind of all agree on, probably not the best things to pursue, like super high sugar diets, super highly processed diets, things that are really rich in vegetable oil. Generally, not so great, that's what I found anyway. Remember, this is not nutritional advice. So the final thing under appearance is about clothing, outfits effectively. And like I said, this is gonna be an experimental phase. So you're gonna look back at some of the outfits you wear and think, <laughs> and then you're sure that was the right decision. All right, but that's just part of the game. What I found is as I step into my womanhood in my 20s, right, and grow into that person and look for more pieces that are classical or more sophisticated or just look more put together, that I can draw on the information and experiences of women, again, who are older or who may be in the fashion scene. Like, I am not really in the fashion scene and haven't been super with that my whole life, but I can look to them. Pinterest is one of my favorite places to go to. Apps, I have so many Pinterest boards dedicated to outfits. It's crazy right now. But I love that, or I love watching women on YouTube who are a lot more knowledgeable in it. And I'll put some people up, but use these people and leverage these sources of information to find what works for you. And it's not about emulating anyone, right? You don't have to copy anyone. It's about finding what works for you and what you feel comfortable in and what represents the womanhood that you are trying to achieve. So the next thing is about making money as you step into the woman that you want to be in, the ideal version of yourself. Right, and one of the most powerful things you can do in your 20s is to generate high income skills that you can kind of offer to people in terms of freelancing or in terms of being an employee. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like being able to do that is one of the reasons I've had the experiences and been able to buy the things that I want to go the places I want to in my 20s, right? It's because I learned how to code or program and some cloud engineering and then was able to get a really good paying job for my age. But that being said, I think there is something very powerful that you can do whilst you still have the opportunity to take risks in your 20s. And that's finding your combinations. Now, what do I mean by this? Effectively, your combinations is a set of skills that you have that you can put together, pull together in a way to make money. And you're still drawing on your interests and skills. For example, if you are a programmer, somebody who codes, but you also happen to be a very good public speaker and somebody who can you know, interact well with the camera and presents really well, and you also have marketing, social media skills, 
This combination is out here earning people a lot of money. And you'd be surprised at how some of these combinations, how rare they are. So that's actually the same skill like programming and being tech savvy. But now you can configure it in a way that aligns more with the life that you want to live, right? The way you want to work, how you want to work and where you want to work from as you step into this version of yourself. So that's really what I wanted to focus on here about making money. I have loads of other videos on my channel going deeper into certain things. But I think this is a really, really important component to think about in your 20s as you're crafting the life you want. So the next thing I wanna talk about is actually hobbies. And I think this is a really underrated conversation, but it really is an important component of living a life that's enriched beyond just financial goals and you know financial pursuits. I genuinely believe from what I've seen of other women's journeys, people that I've spoken to in life, people that I've seen online, things that I've read, that if you don't invest in your creative energy, right, those creative juices, there will be a feeling of lack in your life. Right. And this could just be a general thing in a sense where if everything is geared to money, you sit back and you're like, hmm. And it's also really important because I think it makes you a more dynamic and interesting person, both to yourself and to those around you, right? Like if you find things that you're passionate about and that excite you and that you don't necessarily have to worry about how much money you're gonna make on it, you can kind of invest that energy into that thing and just enjoy it for what it is. So try new things, pick up a paintbrush, you know, try a new instrument, go swimming, go to Pilates, go horse riding, try these things out and see what hobbies fit you. You don't have to do what anybody else is doing, but do things that align with you. It's so funny because you always get that question like, oh, what do you do for fun or you know give us three interesting facts about yourself and you're sitting there like I play sims two three and four if that counts and so the next thing I want to talk about is online influences we spend so much time online that it's impossible to not talk about this when you're talking about growing into the person that you want to be because the things that we engage with and interact with influence the things we do and that we don't do the way we see the world the way we see ourselves so many things and so in your 20s, when you are trying to become that ideal version of yourself, that ideal woman, it is so important what you are consuming and that you're auditing what you're consuming in a sense that checking who you're following. Doesn't it still make sense to follow the same person you followed at 19 or 21 now that you're 26? Are these people and what they're posting and what they're talking about still aligned with where you're trying to go and what you're trying to be? If you know there are things that you want to achieve in life or certain types of life you want to live, again, it's not about replicating anybody's life, but learning from the experiences and perhaps some of the mistakes or the trials of others, right? Then engage with those accounts because if you keep feeding yourself these other things and you know keep signaling to the algorithm that that is what you want, that is what you want to see, then that is what you'll see and it will impact your everyday. So moving on from online influences, I wanna talk about challenging your ideas in your 20s. If you want to be a woman of the world, but really somebody who is involved or interested in seeking truth and understanding and having really engaging dynamic conversations, you have to be willing to challenge your ideas about life and challenge the way you think things work. In our 20s, I feel like we can be quite stubborn or think we know it all or really have these idealized visions about the way the world works, which means we're less likely to interact with information, books, people who challenge those ideas and concepts that we have. And that's really only to our own detriment. When I was around 22, 23, I started watching content and engaging with content that was very different to the ideas that I had about life. And at first there was kind of a visceral reaction, but the more that I listened, the more kind of overlap I found, like the more points of similarities and then differences I found in the way that this person was speaking, right? And I was open to listening to them. And I think that in itself is a superpower, being willing to listen to ideas that are going to force you to question yours. So if you wanna be the type of woman who can go to a dinner party and speak about something at brunch or even if you want to be open to having relationships with friends or particular partner whose ideas may differ from your own then you have to be willing to listen it doesn't mean you have to accept everything but it does mean you have to be willing to listen in good faith and finally let's talk about relationships this is such a big part of life in your 20s and I literally did a whole video just about friends and losing and gaining them but one thing you'll find in your 20s is that you really, really want to nurture the relationships you have, especially those high quality individuals, people who enrich you and who, you know, you feed back into and that there is such a great dynamic because I think the older you get, the more opportunities for organic meeting uh, becomes less, right? Without school or university where you are with your peers and people who you likely have commonalities with, that decreases. But that doesn't mean that it just has to stop. And this is why I say in your 20s, where you do have these kinds of events or sorts of areas and arenas where you can meet people, like the gym, like work, like that painting and Prosecco class, reach out to people, have conversations, you never know who you're gonna meet. So moving on from that in relationships, I wanna talk about boundaries because in your 20s, 
you will come across multiple people who try to push your boundaries. This is just life in general. But I think the younger you are, the more people will try to test you and the more time you may falter. And that's okay. I don't think you should beat yourself up about it too much. But you do need to understand your ground rules, establish them and stick to them, right? Because there will be people, like I said, who try to test you. And it's important to find the balance between I'm in a relationship, whether it's a friendship or a partner, right? And therefore there's gonna be another person with another set of ideas about life and experiences. So you're not gonna be able to have everything your way or everything their way, it's compromise. That doesn't mean that your boundaries can keep being crossed and that's okay. So I think in your twenties, work out your boundaries, work out what's not okay for you and stick to that. Final thing that kind of leads into that and boundaries is about your intuition and that gut feeling. I once read, I can't remember how long ago it was, this idea that that gut feeling isn't this kind of magical fairy thing, but it's really your subconscious picking up on things that your conscious mind hasn't yet had time to process, right? It's like that idea of why you notice something in your peripheral vision, right? That something weird was going on in your environment and you suddenly felt a shift. Even though you weren't focusing on that thing, but the parts of your brain were intaking all the information about the environment. And the same can be said with people, right? Perhaps it's the way the person speaks to you or what they said, the inflection in their voice, their facial expressions, their body language. Notice when you're kind of feeling uncomfortable around people. And that's not to say that that means you have to throw the whole person away, right? And that your gut feeling is 100% right all the time. But it's really good to confer with why you feel like that. Why do you feel uncomfortable around this person? Or why do you feel really good around this person? So that's it. If you want to dive deeper into the defining decade, that being your 20s, then I did a whole series on this. And I'll leave some of those videos around here for, you know, to peruse at your own will. I'll see you in the next one.